This lesson is on the dynamic atmosphere. So it starts with our first objective, which is to describe the composition of air and explain how we can measure this. To explain how oxygen and CO2 levels vary within our atmosphere and what causes this. And to analyse evidence for the development of the atmosphere, therefore recalling the steps of how the Earth's atmosphere has developed since its beginning to the present day. We need to understand how oxygen and carbon dioxide levels vary within our atmosphere. And this happened because of several important chemical processes. Now if we start with plants as your way of remembering this, remember that plants carry out two important processes. The first is respiration. Now respiration is carried out by all living things and it is a cellular process. Very similar to combustion, but because it's done on a cellular level, it's far more controlled reaction. So in respiration, plants or animals will take glucose molecules and react it with oxygen in the products will be carbon dioxide and water. So that will increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, but decrease the amount of oxygen. The other important process is that plants in particular will do is photosynthesis. So photo means light, synthesis means to create. So it is a method of creating the plant's food, i.e. glucose, by light. And it uses that light energy to break apart carbon dioxide and water molecules and then form oxygen and glucose. So that will increase the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere and decrease the amount of carbon dioxide. We can also then use plants as fuels. And if we use them as fuels, then that means that we, are, we can combust them, which will decrease the amount of oxygen in the air and increase the amount of carbon dioxide. And it is this combustion process that also leads to pollutants in the air, such as nitrogen oxides from internal combustion engines and sulphur dioxide. If we go along from plants, plants are fed on by animals and animals, like plants, will also carry out respiration. So as humans, we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. So that again is going to decrease the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere but increase the amount of carbon dioxide. And all of these processes are closely related to each other. So it's totally normal for oxygen and carbon dioxide levels to vary in very small amounts, almost continuously. However, overall, the percentage of our atmosphere that's made from carbon dioxide and oxygen remains almost constant. This demonstration is to show what percentage of the air is oxygen. Inside this glass tube we have some copper turnings and we have 100 millilitres of air. We want to calculate what proportion of that is oxygen. So we're going to react the gas across the copper turnings by pushing it across the two measuring cylinders as we heat the copper to encourage it to react with the oxygen. We'll be able to look at the measuring cylinder at the end of the reaction and work out the difference between and then therefore calculate the percentage of air in the atmosphere. At the start of the reaction we have 100 millilitres of air. We're going to react this completely with copper to calculate what percentage of the air is oxygen. Once the reaction is complete, we need to allow it to cool. This is because as we've heated up the air, the air pressure has increased. So actually the volume of the gas at the moment doesn't accurately represent the same as the volume of gas that we started with because the temperature is different. So once we've allowed it to cool, we'll then be able to read the difference in temperature. If we look at the results, we can see that the gas cylinder volume has decreased to so just below 80. So if we take these two numbers away from each other, we can calculate what proportion of the air was oxygen. 
When we began this demonstration, we started with 100 milliliters of air. Once we'd reacted the oxygen in, in the cylinder with all of the copper, we had a final volume just below 80, which was about 79. So we take these two numbers away from each other, we then get an answer of about 21% of the air consisting of oxygen. We need to be able to describe the composition of our atmosphere in terms of the proportion of which it's made up by different gases. So most of our atmosphere is made up from nitrogen, about 78%. This is because nitrogen has a triple covalent bond which is highly unreactive and very stable. So nitrogen won't react with many compounds. Oxygen forms about 21% as we've just demonstrated for our uh, practical. The remaining 1% mostly contains argon. Argon is an example of a noble gas, so it's totally unreactive and totally inert. Carbon dioxide, which we know is an important part of our atmosphere, actually only performs a very small proportion of it. It's about 0.03%. This thing changes slightly because of the amount of deforestation and increased energy demands that we've put on burning fossil fuels. So carbon dioxide levels have risen, but it's only by a very, very small amount. We measure this in parts per million. So the level of carbon dioxide is still fairly constant within our atmosphere, despite its increase. This question is a common six mark exam question for this topic. It describes how the atmosphere has changed since its early beginnings to the present day. So if we wanted to answer this, first we need to start right back when the Earth was still forming. At that point, our atmosphere consisted mainly of carbon dioxide with water vapour as a gas and ammonia and methane and this, these gases were given out by volcanoes so they came from inside the earth. As the earth started to cool, water vapour then condensed and that began to form oceans and it was in these oceans that early life started to form. The oceans also serve one other important function in which the carbon dioxide dissolves in water. So a lot of the earth's carbon dioxide from its early atmosphere is now dissolved in our oceans. And over time, nitrogen increased because of its lack of reactivity. This is because nitrogen molecules have a triple covalent bond and therefore are very stable. Because we got oceans, we started to get the first forms of life. And when we started to get photosynthetic life, which is organisms that photosynthesize and produce oxygen, that meant oxygen levels started to increase close to where they are to the present day. So this describes how carbon dioxide has decreased naturally, how oxygen levels have increased as of nitrogen. Nitrogen because of its inactivity and oxygen because of photosynthesis. Hopefully now you feel you can achieve these objectives and describe the composition of air, understand how we can test for the level of oxygen within the atmosphere, to explain how carbon dioxide levels vary within the atmosphere, and finally to evaluate the evidence for the development of the atmosphere.